This next one's called function two, squaring an argument. Now you have to write a function that takes an argument and returns the square of it. So this one's a little different in that normally they give us a sort of stub of a method and then we put the guts in and now we're responsible for coming up with the signature. And it looks like it should be called square from the comments here, right? And it also says static function which takes a double and returns a square of that double. So I won't delete the comment right away. It's got a helpful note in it. And you can also see that down here they're invoking a method by the name square. So that looks good. So we have to recall what are the elements of a function, its signature. And so first you have this access modifier that is typically public or private, but there's a protected one as well, which we'll get to later. You do, you can optionally leave it out and it defaults to private in the case of a class, but I'll put it in. We want ours to be public anyway, so the tests can access it. Public, we have an optional static, which we will include because they specifically told us to. And remember that because it's static, they can just say kata dot, then the method name. Otherwise, they would have to create an object of type kata. You know, you would have something like kata kata equals new kata. And then you could say kata square. This is the object oriented way, right? Where you're creating objects and then accessing their member functions and fields. But with static, it's like that's turned off. No object orientation. You don't have to create any objects. You can just access it. So we got public and static. Then what do we have? We have a return type. And here it's specified to be double. This is not optional. You definitely have to say what the function returns. If it returns nothing, then you say void. So we have double, then we use the function name, which was provided square. And then we have parentheses, which can hold parameters, or it can be empty if there are no parameters. In this case, it says it takes a double. So we'll put in double and we get to name the parameter however we like. We can call it double, I'll just say num for number. Then we use these curly braces to define the scope of the function. Everything within these curly braces will be part of the function. If I start coding down here, this is not in the function, right? So if you create a variable in this space, it only lives in the context of the function and you can't access it outside of the method. This would be an error. You know, test does not exist here. So functions have this, the bodies have this temporary scope. Unless, of course, you make a member field, right? You could say private int test. And then whatever you do with test in here is going to live on. You know, that's fine. But anyway. So we have that. Then we get to put our body in. And which takes a double and returns a square of that double. So we've seen a couple different ways to do squaring. If we don't want to bring in any other libraries, we could simply say return num times num, right? If you multiply a value times itself, that's how you square it. But we have also seen that the math library has a function for this. We have to bring in using system to access that. We can say math pow, and you can take your num and raise it to whatever power you like. And this might be nice if you later had intentions of adjusting the value. I guess that doesn't really make sense with the method being named square, but you get the idea. So probably, I think that covers us for squaring. They just want us to square the, the value pow does return a double and the previous way we did it where we had num times num because num is a double uh, the result is a double so that should have been fine too 
I'll go ahead and attempt this. And we got our green. Looks good. See, I like that they kind of took out the usual stub and they make you start thinking about how to construct these, these methods. So if you want to play around and remove the access modifier, you should see a blow up and stuff like that. Same with static. But yeah, that's pretty much methods in a nutshell. This would be the method signature. So hit me up with questions. Otherwise, we'll keep moving. Thanks for watching. I suppose I could submit it off first. Grab that Caillou, right? Oh, we're up to 199. We'll get 200 in the next one. So yeah, num x times x, number times number. Someone probably did. Oh, come on, no math. We were the only ones that do math. There we go, math pal. So yeah, all right, now I'm leaving for real.